Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out Terra Brush. Now this is a terrain editor for the Godot game engine. Uh, what makes this one kind of unique is this is an entirely C Sharp project. It is completely open source, hosted on GitHub. I'm going to show you how to get up and running with this guy, uh, well, right now. So we're going to go ahead and check this out. It's, it says it's a minimal terrain height map editor, but I think that's actually very misleading because this actually does quite a bit, as we will see in just a second. So if you want to go ahead and grab it, what you're going to want to do is clone it from GitHub. By the way, if you do like his work, Come on in here, uh, give them a couple of stars. So um, it's frequently updated, MIT license, it's a very cool project. All right, so we've got the repository cut. The other thing you're going to need to do, this is a C-sharp project. So when you go to the Godot and you download a version, you're going to want to make sure you download Godot engine, uh, the .NET version. Uh, and then once you're done that, we'll go ahead, open up our command prompt. We will, of course, switch into our temporary directory and git clone paste and there is our repository. It's gonna take a couple seconds for it to come down. I don't know why, but GitHub is never the fastest thing in the world for me. It might be just a Canadian thing, but uh, so once that is done, go ahead and open up your Godot. Make sure again that it is the version that supports C Sharp. Open your project, uh, and then you can go ahead and import that project in. So that was in temp, of course. Uh, so temp, and then it is TerraBrush. All right, go ahead like that. And you see sample project is available right there. Select the current folder, import and edit. So now this is gonna load up the sample project. You could also accomplish, uh, create your own project and add TerraBrush to it. There is documentation on the GitHub page on how to do that. We'll go back to the GitHub in just a few minutes, but uh, let's continue with the demonstration. All right, so here we go. Uh, Godot is loaded up now. Uh, it should load in the, the proper resource in just a second. So there is a file in there called demo.tscn. It should automatically open up. There we go. So demo level opens up automatically. And you're gonna notice out of the box, not a lot going on. Well, first thing you need to do is go up here to project, project settings, and then hunt over to plugins like so, and enable TerraBrush like this. Like, th oh, you can't yet. All right, first build your project because it is a C-sharp project, build it so that things work, it will run and compile, uh, and that's why there's not loading the add-ons in the background, let that go ahead and run. Now, project, project settings, enable. All right, there you go. So now we are set and good to go. I basically, I'm not 100% certain it's required, but I actually reload uh, at this point in time. So let's just load that back up, go over here, open up your TerraBrush project, and now things sh should be working correctly. So again, your order of operations is do a build, and then you go ahead and um, open it up accordingly. And now what you're seeing is a lot more. So now the plugin works, but do make sure you do that plug, uh, the build of the first hand. And here you can see our world or level. Let's drive around it for a little bit. So this is in a stylized art style right now. Uh, this isn't a requirement because basically uh, you can set the TerraBrush object up to do um, whatever you want. So you can see over here, uh, if I select TerraBrush, you're going to see a number of different settings for it over here. So you can set up uh, how textures, what the various different textures are. Normally these are uh, arrays of values that you can then specify your own uh, textures in. There you see the textures show up down here. Uh, ditto for objects in the world. So things that are painted in the world are defined this way, and you can drill down and define your own there. Um, so foliage and objects are all defined this way. So that's what we've got in this initial approach. So then it's a pretty straightforward uh, world editor. So what we can do here, uh, so you see we got water in the world and where I've got the cursor right now, this bright, bright red spot, that is our effect area and then the radius fall off. So you see here, if I switch down the brush size, it affects a smaller area. And if I turn up the brightness, you're gonna see a much sharper red, uh, so you're gonna have less fall off. You can also pick how your brush is going to work. So basically the scattering of the effect. Uh, so let's turn the brush strength down. Let's go to a pretty solid brush like so. And then you can see here, we've got a variety of different options. The only feedback I would give to the author from my experiences so far, I would love to see tool tips on these. Most of these are pretty straightforward with what they do. So you've got things for like uh, plus height, minus height, uh, pinching, uh, I think smoothing and so on. But it'd be very nice to actually have uh, actual tool tips over these things so you know what each one does. So this one here, for example, is going to raise the terrain underneath. There you see the immediate result there. So we got terrain, we've even got, we've got water options here. So we got river right here. So I can go here and I can get rid of river or I can add river in like so. And we can just start carving out like that. So if I wanted to do a little island in the stream, I can do so around there. Uh, we also have the ability to paint direct surfaces. So right here, painting, I'm gonna pick over here to the snow. We can paint snow in there or dirt. 
or a variety thereof. Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of the idea behind it. Like I said, it's a very easy uh, uh, tool to work with in that regard. You've also, again, you've got a number of different uh, objects being placed in the world. This would normally be used for trees. So here I can say, and I can select the object, but I only have one set going here. So I'll use what they've got. So I could delete what they've got going on over here, or I can go back to the add brush and we can add trees back in. Now where this actually gets really kind of cool is over here. So what you see here, we got this little checkbox here set auto add zones. So this is uh, a cube of terrain right there. But let's say I wanted to make this go bigger. Well, I could actually turn this on right here. And this is really neat. So I'm going to go here. I go back to river. I'm going to keep adding river. And I'm just going to keep adding river off into that direction. And you'll notice as we went out, it basically just updated the world for me. And that is really cool. So then if I come in here, I want to, you know, raise things up. I can do so. So let's go here so we can bring up and then you'll notice as I crossed this zone over here it automatically added a new one so as our train keeps growing so let's say I I move our river out this way so let's go here add more river and we keep going out this way boom it will automatically add a new zone a new zone uh, really useful so basically as you keep changing the size of your train it just keeps uh, adding new zones in as you go uh, very useful tool in that regard. And that is kind of the gist of TerraBrush. It, it is a straightforward height map editor. Uh, height map, by the way, is generally means that this underlying surface, this uh, this terrain here, is ultimately just a texture map where the, the amount of darkness on it determines how high or low something goes. Uh, it's a very straightforward and fast way of adding terrain into the world. What you're going to find with it, uh, the only real downside to it is you can't have overlapping terrain because it's just a fixed height value. Uh, so if you want to have caves or something like that, you're generally out of luck with a height map solution. Other than that, uh, that's kind of the gist of it. Again, we could go ahead, we can add snow like that. Uh, we can take away snow like that. Uh, and then everything else you pretty much saw here. So there's a straightforward texture painting. And then we got snow painting itself. Uh, we got the ability to add uh, shrubs, shrubbery, foliage into our world like so. And again, you define all these things by setting them up into these arrays here. So if you do not want this cartoony look, very easy to um, just get rid of it. Just basically uh, swap out the array, use something else that you want in its place. And that's that's TerraBrush, a C-sharp based extension for creating height map trains in Godot, but it does so much more than that. As you saw, it does uh, rivers and auto sizing and um, foliage placement and uh, so much more. So it, it is not really as simple as they are selling it as, which is uh, pretty cool. So again, you will need Godot uh, 4.1 or 4.2 or later, and you'll need to make sure you use .NET. Uh, so if you want to learn more about it, it is MIT licensed. I will have this link in the linked article down below. Again, if you like it, uh, give them a star, even if you're not going to check it out. I think people on GitHub just appreciate the stars. It gives more exposure on the GitHub algorithms, I believe. Uh, in terms of features, we covered most of them, uh, but you get an idea of exactly what it's all about. There are a number of different shortcuts here. Oh, by the way, there are also Pi menus. I guess I didn't show that. So V, like so. So quick pop, so you don't need to come over here. And B but uh, that's for uh, over down choosing the different brushes available. Uh, but yeah, you do have these quick pie menus available there as well. Uh, it's a cool tool, uh, just across the board. By the way, if it doesn't do everything you need it to, I have covered another one in the past called Train 3D uh, that is also worth checking out. This is a C++ extension as a Godot, um, this is it's a GD extension written in C++. Uh, and it's probably a more complicated or complex thing. So if for some reason uh, this plugin isn't working for you, if TerraBrush isn't enough, uh, Train 3D might be a good step. But I think for a lot of people, you're going to find that TerraBrush is it's enough for uh, most game projects. It's a, it's a cool project. Again, it does have collisions being created as well. So your world will interact with it, your physics objects work, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's it. TerraBrush for the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.